All right, before continuing with the study guide, I thought I'd go over a few things here and then diving into it. Now, I have drawn a picture of a neuron with the soma and the dendrites being shown in this area right here. And of course, the axon is this area right here. So we know that, okay, the action potential is generated right around this area, and this area is going to get a name very quick, soon, and it travels in this direction toward the axon terminals. And we talked about what happens at those ax axon terminals, at those axonic bulbs, and the presynaptic membrane. Now what we're interested in is the connections that are being made to the soma and the dendrites. Now to each neuron, there could be a thousand other neurons making synaptic connections to the soma and the dendrites. Well, and the way I'm going to draw these synaptic connections, just to make my life a little bit easier, is like this. Where this part right here is the presynaptic membrane, okay? And, of course, this is the axon of that neuron that is making that connection. So, if we're just going to actually go ahead and look at this thing right here. Let's just kind of look at something like here, okay? And we'll try to recreate it down here, which kind of looks like this, right? We had two branches, right? And then you had the axon starting right here. Right here, what you have is you have one axon synapsing there, you have another axon synapsing from another neuron synapsing there. We have another axon synapsing here. And we have another one that is synapsing perhaps here. Okay? And these synaptic connections can be excitatory or inhibitory. And that all depends on whether the neurons that are synapsing to this dendrite, whether they're inhibitory neurons or excitatory neurons. So what's the difference between inhibitory and excitatory neurons? Well, inhibitory neurons will secrete neurotransmitters, which are inhibitory, because those neurotransmitters will bind to transmitted channels that conduct Cl- or potassium. The excitatory neurons, they will secrete neurotransmitters or release neurotransmitters from their presynaptic membranes that will bind to transmitted channels that conduct sodium across or cations. So you will get depolarization. Let's say that the red one is excitatory. Actually, we'll say that the green and the red and the yellow are all excitatory. So we'll go ahead and put an E for excitatory here. And we'll say the purple one is inhibitory, an inhibitory neuron. So what will happen is if action potentials are traveling down the excitatory neurons, and they're getting to these presynaptic membranes, then what you're going to get is depolarization right here. So here's depolarization of the membrane right here, depolarization of the membrane right here, depolarization of the membrane right here. Now, if they're constantly firing action potentials and are constantly releasing neurotransmitters, well, this depolarization event will start to spread. Right? We start to spread and down, and eventually, remember, this is the beginning of the axon right here. So the beginning of the axon, and we're going to give it a name sooner or later, that depolarization event will keep flowing down until it gets to that initial site on the axon. Now, if the inhibitory neuron that's synapsing, that's also generating action potentials, and it's releasing its neurotransmitter, what you'll get is hyperpolarization of this membrane right here. And if you get enough hyperpolarization of this membrane right here, you kind of start to stop this depolarization from spreading too far. So I'm going to try to make this a little bit easier to draw out. Although we're in two dimensions here, we're not even thinking in three dimensions, what I'm going to do is take this membrane that we have drawn in black and sort of straighten it out. And I'm going to give this beginning of the axon a name. So we've been talking about this area in the beginning of the axon 
where the action potential is initiated, and now we're going to give it a name. This is called the axon initial segment, or AIS. I just called AIS just because I don't want to keep saying axon initial segment. So what we're going to do is we're going to sort of straighten out this, this line right here, the black line, and to make our lives easier to see what's happening. So here it is. And here is my axon initial site, which in the picture above would be somewhere here, right? So it's going to be somewhere here. And I have these different neurons synapsing with the membrane here. Now, I'm going to actually now draw them out. And I don't remember what the colors were. Let's see. So we had... The purple one was the closest, right? So here's the purple one, synapsing. And we have the green one next. The green one is synapsing. And then we have uh, the red and the kind of yellowish color are pretty close to each other. So we'll just have red first. And the last one. So if I was going to look, each one of these axons that are synapsing with this dendrite and soma of this other cell, this other neuron, each one of them has action potentials being fired down them, right? So if I was going to look and just do that whole voltage meter thing, so it could be the frequency depending on the activity of that neuron at any time that it is high frequency or medium frequency, low frequency, higher frequency, or non-existent. There's, none, there's no action potential being fired. And we have to remember that this one is inhibitory and these three are excitatory. Then the excitatory ones are going to release neurotransmitters will make the membrane, the postsynaptic membrane, remember this is the postsynaptic membrane right here, that will make the postsynaptic membrane permeable to sodium. And what will happen is that since these are all three of these, the excitatory ones have an action potential, that means that the membrane here will be permeable to sodium. So you're going to have sodium coming in. Just This is for sodium. The red arrow, sodium coming in. Sodium coming in. And now if I was sort of going to compare, because based on the amount of action potential, more sodium will be coming in here because you have a higher frequency in the green one, a little bit less for this one. And for the yellow... Uh, axon, it's sort of in the middle, it's action potential frequency, You so we're going to put three arrows, just to have, so you guys can see the difference. Now the inhibitory one is not even firing, so nothing is happening. And as long as these neurons are firing, this patch will become depolarized, and the depolarization will eventually start to be felt at the AIS. And you start to get a change in potential at the AIS, and if it passes the threshold, you will get an action potential generated, which will fire down the axon toward the axon terminals. Okay? Let's say now I have action potential is being fired here, and they're actually pretty high frequency. And what this is going to do now is make this membrane hyperpolarized. Why? Because inhibitory neurotransmitters will bind to channels that are either conducting Cl- or potassium. So this patch of membrane becomes hyperpolarized, and that's being shown in green. And even though the other neurons are firing too and depolarizing this patch of membrane, well, once this depolarization reaches that green patch, the hyperpolarized patch, well, that depolarization can't get past it, so that depolarization will not reach 
the AIS, and if he doesn't reach the AIS, then you're not going to generate an action potential. An excitatory connection will create what we call an excitatory postsynaptic potential. Where is that postsynaptic potential? For example, for this neuron right here, the postsynaptic potential will be right here, PSP. But since this neuron is excitatory, it will create an excitatory postsynaptic potential, meaning that you're moving the potential in the membrane away from resting potential toward a positive number. You're increasing it. And it's also the same case with this will create an excitatory postsynaptic potential, and this will create an excitatory postsynaptic potential. Whereas the inhibitory neuron, it will create an inhibitory postsynaptic potential, an IPSP. Okay? Now, we just saw the combined effect of all these EPSPs and IPSPs will eventually, eventually be felt at the axon initial segment. So if we go back to this picture that we had here, so let me, if we look at this picture right here, well, the actual initial segment is being shown to you, right? And there are synaptic connections to the dendrites and the soma all over it. And some of those are going to be inhibitory and some of those are going to be excitatory. So depending on the activity of the neurons that are synapsing with the soma and the dendrite, you're going to get a number of IPSPs, plus EPSPs, and the combined effect of them will be felt at the axon initial segment, which could lead to depolarization and the generation of an action potential if you get past threshold. And if you remember what threshold was, is that the membrane has to be polarized to a certain amount so you don't get failed initiation. It's that combined effect of all those connections. So if we're going to go to the study guide and take a quick look. So postsynaptic potential on the axon initial seg site or a segment. In the CNS, a neuron can receive inputs from thousands of other neurons through synaptic connections. So right here, this picture on the right, this is an actual live neuron. And this is the cell body in the middle. And all these things going off of it are the dendrites, okay? And all the red markers, they are synaptic connections being made to it. So you can see this soma and dendrite is just covered with synaptic connections. And this cartoon picture is recreating it. So there's a lot of them, okay? And this is just a small segment of it. They're not showing off all the dendrites going off. And you can see that the initial um, segment right here, not here, that's a myelin sheet, right here, well, if all the excitatory and the inhibitory signals, when you add them up, eventually leads to a change in potential at the initial segment that is past threshold, you'll get firing of an action potential, which will travel down the axon toward the axon terminals. Otherwise, you won't. Okay, I'm going to stop this video right here. I hope you guys listen to it and just digest it a little bit and then kind of read forward a bit because, I, again, I'm, all this stuff is covered in the study guide too. And then I'll go over the study guide step by step afterwards. Okay, thank you guys. Bye-bye.